Hey everyone, Scott Cunningham, aka Scottsy Business. Today we're going to be talking about what actually is the Facebook Libra blockchain. So I made a an article on this on the 20th and I published that. Basically, I just wanted to do a video version of that so that people who watch my stuff on YouTube, etc. can get the same information. If you've already read the article, this will basically have all the same stuff. I'll also link to it. But I'm also going to quickly address two things that um, are really important and they're a part of the article, but I really want to highlight these uh, before I really dive into it. In case you read the article, this is somewhat of an update for those two things. And then I'll jump into the um, the entire explanation going point by point with the uh, the article that I wrote in front of me. So the first thing is that section uh, there's a bill coming out or proposed at least in, in the works by Josh Hawley and it is to remove section 230 protections from big tech giants and essentially this deals with the liability that they hold for being a publisher or a platform as we've all seen they've been censoring doing a lot of sketchy stuff very much so acting as a publisher arbitrarily applying policy um, you know, doing a lot of sketchy things, seeming very politically left-leaning and very biased against uh, right-wing uh, politicians, conservative, anyone who just falls in that category, or even just right of the left. So even centrist libertarians, lots and lots of people are being um, affected by this. Uh, but this bill would enforce that they either have to be a publisher or a platform and prove as such. So they would actually have to prove that their internal decision making for uh, deplatforming bans, all of that is fair and honest for both sides and it's neutral. Otherwise, they would be a publisher. And uh, if they continue to be a publisher and they don't um, work with this new bill, then they would be liable for everything on the platform, which would mean which would mean that all of the major major platforms that would be affected by this would have to radically change. They would have no more live streaming, you know, pre-approve every post. It might even apply to messages. It would be really bad. So naturally, it would make sense that all these platforms would just uphold free speech and just stop being so ideologically driven and you know they would they'll, they'll just really pull it back a little bit um ideally that's what that would bring because they don't want to lose their entire uh, user base by restricting everyone and making it like a dystopian social platform uh, and it really only affects major major platforms that are making you know over 500 million dollars a year and they have at least 30 million users and all these different requirements uh, I don't want to get too far into it because I want to do a separate video for this to really focus on this because I think this is huge for social media and um, for people who are fighting against censorship and everything that's been happening over the past several years, um, a lot of it's going to be affected by this. So that'll be a separate video. Keep, uh, keep that in mind. One really, really big thing in this article, and you know what, I'll actually put it on the screen here was me show me highlighting this and you know i had a person point out they said because i had said in the article that you know it libra doesn't really compete with other social media blockchain platforms because it's just a payment platform or a service or whatever it's just it, it's not actually using social media like the facebook social platform it's just using that as a place to exist, not necessarily working with their social aspects, at least as far as anyone knows. It's not in the white paper, it's not, it wasn't said by anyone, it's not in any announcements, it's nowhere except two days before uh, the announcement, the official announcement, there was two speculative articles, and I believe it was MSNBC and CNN. Um, it's, in, it's in the sources, but they said, they both said, quote unquote, exactly this. And they also didn't have where this quote was from or an actual source. They just had this in quotations. 
Facebook is also looking at paying users fractions of a coin for activities such as viewing ads and interacting with content related to online shopping in a system similar to the loyalty schemes run by real retailers. So essentially, that would be like what the Brave browser already offers. They eliminate ads, but they'll pay you a portion of what they're getting for having viewed the ad because they're monetizing your attention, the basic attention token. And that makes a lot of sense if Facebook was going to do that. But Facebook isn't going to do that because this was written with no sources. It wasn't a real quote. No one actually said this. And it was in speculative, two speculative articles that were released two days before the official announcement, which means that they didn't have any actual information to go on. Then when all the official information came out, not a single article Nowhere came out saying anything like this. It wasn't in the white paper. Mark Zuckerberg didn't allude to it. Nothing. And people are still arguing in hopes. Well, the reason that they're arguing is because this would be a good idea and they wish that was the case, but it's not going to be the case. Uh, Facebook rarely does things that are really useful for the user. Uh, and they, they really do all of their, all of make all their decision making based on what their advertisers and their shareholders need or want or whatever it might be. We've seen this time and time again. Uh, I think it's really unlikely that they're going to do really awesome stuff for the users and for the same reason why there's nothing in the white paper about what they're going to do with the $1 billion in the reserve pool. Why would they do something with it? Well, every year it's earning interest. What will happen with the interest? Likely Facebook will pocket it. There's a chance they might distribute it amongst their investors, but there's no way the end users are going to see any of that. So at the end of this, you'll realize why there really is no incentive for holding on to uh, Facebook stablecoin Libra. But uh, yeah, so those were the main things that I wanted to make sure I got out of the way. Now let's just start from the beginning and I'll just sort of work through the article point by point. And um, yeah, so I mean, just before we get in, I, I really don't recommend Facebook's Libra coin in its current um, capacity because there is no incentive to invest in it. If you just want a quick answer, um, it just it doesn't have any good reason to invest in it. You might want a stable coin from, you know, like Tether as a defensive asset. But with Facebook, if, you know, you could get banned and then lose access or something, you, you don't want to bother taking pointless risks like that. If there's no real incentive to holding the coin, all the incentives are for Facebook or the backers. Um, but we don't know because they're unclear as to what they're doing with the reserve pool and, you know, different things like that. So they came out on Tuesday last week, one week ago, sorry for the delay. And they said they're launching in 2020. They have 28 investors currently. They're going to get 72 more. Each investor gives $10 million to the reserve pool and they'll end up with $1 billion for the launch. Some of the major, major companies that we've got coming in, uh, a lot of payment processors. So that's really interesting. They have very little competition from uh, everywhere except for China for payment processors. They've got Stripe, PayU, PayPal, pretty much everyone. Um, MasterCard, Visa. And, and interestingly enough, Coinbase is on there. I, I'm surprised. I mean, maybe they're just trying to get ahead but it's unfortunate that they would team up with Facebook. Then you see other major platforms like eBay, Uber, Spotify, Lyft. There's a lot of platforms and, um, and just major, major companies that are coming into this. And if they're not going to get some sort of kickback from the reserve pool, then in my mind, the only reason that they want to do this, I mean, aside from each investor gets 1% control of the blockchain. I don't really see how useful that would really be. Um, but if it becomes, you know, some massive global coin, then yeah, I mean, that is relevant. But really, it's because they're saying that they're going to give access to about 20% of the population who is unbanked to this digital currency. So they don't have a bank, they can't buy things online, they don't have credit cards. But this Facebook coin, Libra, will allow them to buy digital goods because likely all of these backers are going to offer services for Libra. And naturally, 
all the other ones that join probably will too. And the reason why they want to do this is because they will get access to money and consumers and, you know, selling ads and doing everything to 20% of the market that they couldn't access before. So if anything, this is just an amazing way for them to expand their reach. And by becoming investors early, it gives them a head start and uh, helps them get set up with the infrastructure and everything. Because of course, you know, Facebook came out with a proprietary brand new coding language for their blockchain. They're trying to make it as challenging as possible, I think, for, um, you know, blockchain enthusiasts who are not with them to work with their technology. You know, they're buying up companies, they're they're creating proprietary technologies and protocols. They're going to, in my opinion, I think they will slow down the innovation of blockchain. Um, like they bought Chainspace, which I believe they came out with a, a proprietary protocol that was like better than what most uh, were doing for, I can't remember what it was, but they bought it up so that they could get that. And I'm pretty sure they're going to continue doing things like that. And then, you know, obviously not sharing them with everyone else. So naturally, Facebook will be doing better, but stunting the progress of blockchain uh, as a technology. So I covered a lot of this already. Um, yeah, and it's really just about consumerism at the end of the day. I don't think that they're doing it because you know, they, they believe in helping people who are unbanked and, you know, all these different things. And they're trying to actually become more privacy focused and decentralized. You know, it's all just pseudo, um, rhetoric just, just because, you know, they need to keep that public image, but really it's, it's about getting more of the market. It's competing with China, you know, it's, um, it's just that general back and forth of big tech oligarchy conglomerate ridiculousness that you see all the time. And, um, yeah, you know, I said here, I said, honestly, if, uh, if Facebook has been banning people and censoring people and doing all this crazy stuff and, uh, you know, section two thirty doesn't protect the financial aspect of their, of their tech, of their service, their platform, which is Libra, then, um, you know, you'll, you get easily banned all the same. It'll be the exact same. You know, they'll not let you use their, um, their services and, you know, maybe eventually Spotify only accepts Libra. Now you can't use Spotify and, you know, all these different things. And because that's how it usually works. PayPal works with GoDaddy and all these other companies. When one company bans you or censors you, if you try to retaliate, they all work together to ensure that you can't. And that collusion or, you know, like list of companies that work together is growing. Um, and this pretty much puts that out for everyone to see who's actually a part of that. Now, that might not be the case that these are actually all malicious and, you know, they don't like free speech and, but I can guarantee you they all only really care about getting that access to more consumers and, or, um, you know, getting interest from the reserve pool. And a lot of these big, big, important things that I'm talking about weren't really mentioned much, um, you know, in articles or in the white paper, obviously, or cause, cause they're not going to talk about what they're really doing. And, um, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty interesting. You know, it, it, they don't even need a blockchain. That's another thing. You know, it runs on nodes and it uses a lot of basic infrastructure of blockchain, but they only really needed a database because I'm yeah, actually here. Let me go to the bottom. There was a great quote. Ah, yes, the Financial Times said this. Given that Facebook simply appears to be trying to build a global pseudo banking and payments network, there doesn't appear to be any good reason why they would need to do this using blockchain tokens, which as the author actually points out in the white paper that they've been volatile and difficult to scale. China's um, major network, WeChat Pay and Alipay, they are going to be their major competitors and they have a very similar user base because they make up for, I believe, 20% of the transactions uh, in the world 
are done through WeChat and Alipay, at least for mobile transactions. And they make up for 90% of the mobile transactions in China. And um, yeah, neither and none of those use the blockchain. PayPal doesn't use the blockchain, neither does Venmo. Internet money doesn't always need to be blockchain. So why is Libra a blockchain when it really isn't anything meaningful? I mean, it isn't a blockchain in any meaningful sense of the word. Very, very, very true. It it um it doesn't really hold any of the values of blockchain. It does it doesn't have a lot of the things that what a blockchain really should be. Um, and yeah, like it's permissioned, it's centralized. Um, it, it really falls short of being what most people consider an actual blockchain to be today, right? Now we're starting to see these like pseudo blockchain projects popping up. Um, DLive is another really, really great example because PewDiePie, the number one subscriber on YouTube, he or the number one subscribed uh, creator on YouTube because he endorsed using DLive for live streaming everyone is flocking to that platform as a blockchain social platform but unfortunately it runs on lino points which i've done a whole video on and the whole point of that video was to show you that lino points isn't really a blockchain it's not launched they don't have any idea when they will launch it uses lino points which uh previously could only be transacted through paypal now at least they can send you bitcoin um, but it's not publicly traded, it's centralized, it's it's private, they control the price entirely. So say you bought a thousand Lino points today, and in one year they said Lino points are now worth half the value, you just lost half your money. Because it's not publicly traded, so there's no real potential to gain unless they just decide to give away a bunch of money, which they won't. And they also have minimum withdrawals and all this sketchy stuff. Um, I highly do not recommend using it because it is not a blockchain and it's really unfortunate that PewDiePie got tricked into thinking that it was or just didn't look deep enough to realize that it actually isn't because most people on there don't realize they're just happy that they can get lino points and then get money it's it is a little better than twitch for what they offer um, but it's not a blockchain social media platform anyways Going back to this, um, they claim that the association is only made up of big tech private investors. Duh, 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 duh. Yeah, like it, it's only made up by big private investors and they claim that it's decentralized, right? So here's the thing. When something is decentralized, by definition, yes, it just means that not one organization is in control. But generally, in terms of blockchain, when we're talking decentralization, we're talking a lot more like anyone can sort of get involved and, you know, it's not decentralized only to the point of like 100 people and it's only big tech uh, private investors who are rich and powerful and probably not very representative of the users regardless. So why are we happy that they've decentralized into the other big tech uh, companies. It's just so that they can say the word decentralized. And look, Facebook isn't the one doing everything. You can't just blame us. Now you have to blame all the other companies that you really like. You like Spotify, don't you? Now you have to hate them as much as Facebook or love them as much as Facebook. That's probably what they're trying to do. They're trying to just get the heat off of Facebook. And uh, I mean, that actually not isn't a bad way to go about it. But but again, it's not the real decentralized in uh, in the way that it's used today, where it, it generally means a lot, a lot of people are involved and it's not going to just fall to a small, small set of people who are going to make all of the decisions because a centralized platform like Facebook might have 15,000 moderators but they all are doing what Facebook wants, just the same as these private investors will. Why would they do something against what Facebook wants um, when it runs on Facebook and it needs Facebook? And Facebook obviously has to do well for them to do well. 
Really, if you want to invest in Libra, you would invest in Facebook stock because you're not going to get anything from investing in their coin. You would invest in their stock because it'll go up for the launch. Again, I don't actually recommend investing in Facebook because they're a sketchy company and I don't see them making it out of the uh, blockchain era of social innovation. I don't know. We'll see. I don't like Facebook. I don't like what they're doing with this blockchain. I don't like what they have done. So it's naturally, it's hard for me to get on board with this as being a good idea. And they say it's no, nearly no fees, which really just means there are fees. Um, and you know, they're late to the game too. You know, there's tons of stable coins. There's tons of, there's, there's cryptocurrencies that have no fees big ones that are social media blockchains uh, like steam so steam you can transact you can send it through the network all zero fees all the time always you never have to spend any steam to do anything with your steam that's amazing and you know facebook's bragging how they have nearly no fees it's like again you're pretty late to the party this is already being done uh but better so you know, nothing to brag about. And yeah, this is just them trying to catch up and realizing that blockchain is doing really well. So like I said earlier, they're creating proprietary technologies, making uh, their own programming languages, just making it challenging for other people to jump into the game. Um, you know, even major financial authorities have been starting to question and criticize this. Tons of people have come out. Uh, Governor of Bank of England said they would really scrutinize the currency and you know push for regulation. Maxine Waters from the U.S. House of Representatives Financial Services Committee actually asked that Facebook stop developing Libra and wait for government regulation. They probably won't, but it's good that we have people calling for that. Uh, Bruno Le Maire, the French finance minister, believes that Facebook could become a shadow bank and that there is no way that they should be allowed to be become a sovereign currency. Yeah, that's a good point. Like a shadow bank is kind of sketchy. Even Elizabeth Warren, who is a very prominent Democrat, left leaning, is against Facebook. And we know Facebook has been historically very left leaning. So even major like prominent left wing politicians are coming out against this. So we are seeing a lot of pushback. Um from politicians, bankers, tons and tons of people. And this is good because um, we want the hype from this to help with Bitcoin and everything else going up. And it has been, which is good. But we don't want them to be super successful and ruin the market. As I said before, buying up companies, creating proprietary technologies and uh, stunting the progress of blockchain technologies. So like I say here, this was their desperate attempt to get into the game, but there's already people doing these things. Um, it's uh, it's not working out too great so far. They do have a hearing coming up, a public hearing, July 16th, held by the U.S. Senate Committee on Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs regarding Libra because they sent a open letter to Mark Zuckerberg last month, and they're going to be discussing this. Here I just talk about what I talked about previously uh, with China being their main competitor. Probably isn't helping with the uh, trade war going on. Um, Caitlin Long predicts that given it will have close to a billion dollars in the reserve pool, it will be generating huge amounts of interest. I I've talked about this before. Um, this is something that they never really addressed, which is really interesting because it's going to be a lot of money uh, generating from that interest. And, you know, where is that going to go? This is what Mark Zuckerberg said. Uh, he starts off by saying, it's decentralized, meaning it's run by many different organizations instead of one, making the system fairer overall. See, he's going with the rhetoric of decentralization, um, which is, you know, it's like very fair because it's spread out and the power is evenly distributed, but it's distributed between private, uh, massive, wealthy, powerful tech companies that want what Facebook wants. Hardly decentralized. It's like centralization and decentralization are on a spectrum and they took one tiny step towards decentralization, but they're still very much where centralization is. But now they're saying they're decentralized because they took one step in that direction when really it's like, uh, you know, alt left, 
left. Like they took the tiniest step, vi- slight difference, okay, but barely. You know, he talks about how it's going to be privacy focused now and everything. It's like people don't really believe that Facebook's drastically going to change everything for this payment process, like for this payment application that they've got. It's like Oh, now you can do everything privately from messaging to secure payments. They they're still reading your private messages today. They're still reading your private messages. So I don't know why they think that this somehow makes them privacy focused. Like they're suddenly going to care only once they launch this coin. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean that that's pretty much most of it. They they do say that. Um, if you want to use the application that they're launching, it will eventually be a standalone application, but originally it'll run on Facebook's Messenger and Facebook. Um, they say you don't need a Facebook account, but I don't really believe that's going to... It, it, it's a little misleading, right? Because it's going to use your contacts from Facebook. Everyone else is going to be using it through Facebook. So if you're banned from Facebook, it's going to be very challenging for you to use this. And... Something that I thought was hilarious that I saw the other day and I saved and shared myself. Um, This isn't real, but this is a funny way of looking into the future and this will likely be a thing or something very similar to this. You're blocked from your electronic wallet. This is a temporary block. It'll last 30 days. You won't be able to use your currency until it's finished because you purchased something that is against our community standards. I think that's really, really funny and really interesting because... It doesn't seem like that's uh, uh, like a ridiculous possibility. Me trying to sell a cigar cutter on Facebook Marketplace, uh, it was removed because it was like paraphernalia or it was like a weapon or it it was just a really stupid reason. It was a cigar cutter. It was like I bought uh, like I bought like a thing and it came with two. So I was like, okay, there's no reason why I would have two. So I decided I would sell one, but you know, their community standards are really weird. Um, So I I can imagine this definitely would be a thing in the future as well. It's like, oh, you bought, I don't know, a pirated movie or, you know, and they'll, they'll, they'll be in your business and they'll be, and I don't know why people are going to think that, um, or why people would think that just because they're saying they're going to be more privacy focused, just because they're using a blockchain, which they don't even need to, that it's actually going to be more privacy focused. They're going to be watching all of your uh, financial transactions. They're going to know all of your financial history. They say they won't, but it's unlikely that, I mean, <laughs> they said they wouldn't, um, you know, give away all of your information to, uh, or lose it. And, you know, uh, like the Cambridge Analytica. So it's hard to, uh, have that faith in Facebook. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, again, here's, you can sort of see some of the different companies and like the fields that they're in. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'll end off with saying, you know, it's not decentralized, it's not open, it's hardly public. You can't be a part of the governance unless you're a rich, powerful mega company and, you know, they probably already know who they want to involve anyways. It's not neutral um, and it's prone to censorship and restriction based on your, your relationship with Facebook. So, what do you guys think of Libra? Are you going to bother buying any Libra? Are you going to invest in the stock because of Libra? Let me know, what do you guys think about this? Where do you think this is going? How is this going to affect the general crypto market and, you know, all the other coins? Um, You know, it's, there's a lot going on guys. And we've seen Bitcoin shooting up ever since this happened. So at the very least, maybe we can benefit financially and then hope that this, uh, this doesn't um, succeed really. And I, I talked with, people from steam and they said ever since the announcement they've been seeing way more traffic on steam as well so there are benefits from this but i I, i'm concerned as to how this will play out let me know what you think in the comments below um (laughs) let me know what you think in the comments below i'm scott cunningham aka scottsy business signing off cheers